the question, can we actually build all this green energy stuff we're told we need, wind, solar, batteries, green hydrogen even, at the speed we're told is necessary? Well, the, the short answer to that is, is just no. And it, this, again, it's not a political observation. It's a practical observation at the velocity with which we can build stuff, big things. And the world's a very big place. The rate of construction, just digging stuff up, making concrete and steel, you know, basic things, the rate of construction required to meet these aspirations exceeds a global war mobilization. And, and not just a mobilization for a year or two for a global war, which I hope we don't get, but for decades mobilizing infrastructure, construction, and spending at that level. That's simply not in evidence of happening nor being affordable. Maybe more importantly, the giant roadblock to these aspirations are the minerals. I mean, Australia, and my homeland, Canada, are big mining countries. But I can tell you, we know for a fact, and it's again, not my data, but I, International Energy Agency data, World Bank data, IMF, International Monetary Fund data, the world is not now mining nor planning to mine enough of the metals and minerals needed to build these machines. And not just by a little bit, but by factors of 400 to 4,000% short of what's required to build all the solar panels, all the batteries, all the wind turbines. We're not even mining or planning to mine enough copper and one of the most basic ancient elements. We've been mining copper since before recorded history. We know a lot about copper and we know we're not even mining enough copper to build all the electrical infrastructure and all the machines that are associated with this so-called transition that we want to undertake. And you, you've seen, we've also seen the prices of some of these uh, minerals that we need for the transition, like lithium in particular for car batteries, electric car batteries, sure. uh, absolutely soaring. And speaking of electric cars, we're told we must uh, switch to electric cars here in Australia, half of all new car sales by 2030, in part by banning cheaper petrol ones. Uh, we're told electric cars will in fact get cheaper. We're in fact told that most of the new technology we need will get cheaper. Solar will get cheaper. Uh, all the, uh, wind will get cheaper. Is that true? Well, it's not getting, first, it's not getting cheaper now. For the last year or two or several years for wind turbines, they've all been getting more expensive. They're getting more expensive pre precisely the supply chain reasons that seem to be ignored in the, in the green path versus the conventional path. You have to mine a lot of copper and a lot of nickel, molybdenum, and cobalt, and aluminum. And as you increase the demand for those minerals and metals, their price goes up. About 60 to 70% of the cost of making a battery for a car is just in the purchase of the raw materials. Those raw material prices are going up. It's making the batteries get more expensive. So all of the assumptions that these technologies will get cheaper are essentially anchored, entirely anchored, in wishful thinking about enough metals being mined and those materials getting cheaper. They're not getting cheaper. They're getting more expensive. And that says nothing about the geopolitical exposure and risk. If we're talking about supply chain risks, supply chain exposures, China's dominance in refining critical energy minerals is roughly double OPEC's dominance in the oil markets. This, won't, this will not end well if, from a geopolitical perspective as we keep increasing our dependence on suppliers who are not always exactly friendly to countries like Australia and the United States. And we have this huge focus on getting rid of petrol-driven cars. It seems like the uh, poster child of the, you know, the, 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 the enemy, the smirch of the global warming <laughs> movement. But you make the point that mobile phones and even iCloud, or we could add Bitcoin to that, they're massive users of energy. Uh, and in fact, the energy in, in, in making mobile phones now exceeds, you say, by 15% the energy made in making all the cars in the world as well. Shouldn't activists yeah. be actually focused on these emblems of the new generation, mobile phones, et cetera? <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I write about the facts. I don't, I, I'm, I actually like electric cars. I just don't believe we'll build as many as people think. Mandating people to use an expensive vehicle is not gonna have a good outcome. It's also true that this very energy, in, there are, our global cloud, our internet, all the devices we like, the zooming we like to do, it's very energy intensive. Uh, globally speaking, all of the features of the internet and the global cloud all collectively use roughly twice as much electricity as the entire country of Japan does. And the growth rate in that domain 
is actually faster than the growth rate for cars. So it's kind of ironic. You're right. I mean, the tech community wants to buy green. I understand that. And they promote green. But the reality is uh, the average energy provided for most things in the world comes from hydrocarbons for a simple fact that over 80% of all the world's energy comes from hydrocarbons. So this, this amorphous uh, idea that we can abandon them is not evident in the facts. We've spent, I'll say it again, the world spent, not just Europe, something like $5 trillion trying to avoid hydrocarbons. And we've reduced the share of the world's energy coming from hydrocarbons by two percentage points in 20 years after $5 trillion of spending. It's a, it's a very big system. Uh, there will be energy transitions. They'll just take a lot longer than anybody imagines, and they won't be in the form that people imagine today. Mark Mills, uh, you make a fool of the uh, Greens politicians have been telling us for 20 years that coal mines will be a stranded asset. We've seen coal <laughs> uh, sub, uh, prices go through the roof. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Brilliant article. I'm going to recommend that all viewers read it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.